Man, amen. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. 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 As I've been um, going, I, I've been watching a couple of folks have been preaching, and getting down and preaching. And I want to talk about prayer. I, I, you know, I don't I don't want to don't want to preach. I want to teach and talk about prayer. Amen. Teaching is to inform and to instruct and preaching is to move you. And what God has laid on my heart, I want to instruct. Amen. And, and, and if if it moves you, just go ahead and let it move you. Amen. Amen. From the gospel, according to St. Matthew. From the gospel, according to St. Matthew, and I, I am I am recording today because I know we don't have Bible study tonight. So this will be the word that I have to send out. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Gospel, according to St. Matthew in the sixth chapter. And I just want to talk to you a little while today. The sixth chapter. Gospel, according to St. Matthew, the sixth chapter. Amen. I'd like to notice only one verse. If you found it, say amen. amen. That sixth verse. But thou, mm -hmm. when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy father, which is in secret. And thy father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. That's enough. Amen. I'd like to speak to you from a, a thought today. And as I said, I just want to just want to teach you um, today from a thought. Public prayer versus private prayer. Public prayer versus private prayer. Jesus did not preach against public prayer in general. Jesus himself did not limit himself or his praying to private prayer only. The Bible tells us in John 17 verses 11 through 19 that Jesus prayed with and for his disciples. When he was finishing up the last supper that he was having with them, he had a prayer among them and asking God to keep them who he has put in their hands that he's sending them out into the world. And he said, Lord, I need for you to keep them. A amen. He prayed again in a public prayer when, when the Bible says in Luke 10, when Jesus had sent out the 70 two by two to different villages to 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 start teaching about him and telling them about the kingdom of God. And when they returned to Jesus, the 70 returned to Jesus, they turned, they returned praising God saying, Lord, I thank you because man, we were talking to the demons and, and the demons were being running. They were being cast out in your name. And then Jesus said, don't rejoice just because the demons are being cast out. But you need to rejoice because your name is written in heaven. Amen. And when Jesus, amen. And when Jesus had told them that Jesus then went into prayer and prayed for them. Amen. So Jesus was not against public prayer. Are y'all following me? He was not against prayer that is true and, and sincere public prayer. But Jesus was against ostentatious public prayer. Ostentatious public prayer. Ostentatious is a $20 word with a 50 cent meaning. <laughs> ostentatious prayer means prayer for a show. Yeah. Is, that, is that easier for you? Yeah. It's praying for a show. He was against this type of prayer that was clearly designed to impress others rather than to communicate with God. 
Yes. Uh, are y'all are y'all are y'all with me? Yes. See, because there is no way to talk to God and other folks at the same time. Yes. Y'all need to talk to me here. Yes. Amen. So if you're praying to God publicly and then switch to have a conversation with the crowd to say something, then that shows me that your prayer is for the people and not to God. Are y'all going to talk to me? Because when you're talking to God, nothing should break that line of communication with God. Amen. And this is one of the dangers. This is one of the dangers of public prayer because we can get so caught up in what the crowd is saying, we forget about the purpose we're praying. Y'all, come on. I'm going to say this anyway. This, this, this is... This is, a bit, this is as easy as it's going to get. <laughs> it ain't going to get no better. A -a -a Amen. Amen. So, so if, if we're praying publicly, when we're praying publicly, when we're talking to God, we got to talk to God and not to people. Uh, are y'all with me? Amen. Because when, 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 when I'm talking about getting caught up in the crowd, there are some deacons when they're praying who can hoop better in their prayers than the pastor can preaching. <laughs> a -a -a amen, amen, amen. Now, while, while we're caught up in the hoop of the prayer, is that prayer for God or is it for the people? Mm. Nevertheless, Jesus implies here that there are some prayers that should never be made in public. Amen. See, this is why he instructs them to enter into thy closet and shut the door. Sometimes you need to have a talk one on one with God. There are some prayers that should only be between you and the Lord. Can I get some help in here? Jesus himself would often withdraw from the crowds and even from his disciples and pray all by himself. Amen. The Bible tells us in, in Matthew 14, after Jesus had fed that large multitude of 5,000 men, not counting the women and children, and, and he told them to sit on the grass. He got the two fish and the five loaves of bread, and he fed that large multitude. And after he had fed the large multitude, the people started talking and wanting to make him their king. Jesus knew the spirit that was on the people, and he knew that his disciples would join in with the people. So he told his disciples, get in the boat, go on the other side, and I'll meet you over there while I send the multitude away. Are y'all with me? That 23rd verse, Jesus said, the Bible says, and when he had sent the multitude away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray, and when evening was come, he was there alone. Sometimes you've got to learn how to pray without that prayer part. Sometimes it just needs to be you and the Lord. Sometimes you just have to have a little talk with Jesus. Can I get some help in here? A amen. Because there are some things that you can say to God in private that should not be said in public or around anybody else. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There are some things that are nobody else's business. I, I've heard deacons, I've heard, I've heard pastors and preachers, I've heard others praying for situations that should be prayed in private with the individual or with that family instead of everybody knowing their business. Because you got to keep in mind, you got to keep in mind that everybody in the crowd ain't there for the right reasons. Are y'all going to talk to me today? Amen. Everybody's there not for the right reason and everybody's not there th th who are saved. Somebody's there to see what they can hear so they can run and tell that. So sometimes you got to know what to pray for and when to pray for it. Are, are y'all with me? A -a Amen. When we withdraw from the public to our private place of prayer, 
Amen. We, we, we can be sure that God is there with us. When we are by ourselves in our closet with the door shut, it's just me and God. There's no sister, there's no brother, there's no deacon, there's no pastor, there's no children, there's no telephone, there's no television, there are no distractions. It's just me and my God. Hey Amen. You remember in David, I think it was in, in 1 Samuel 30, when, when David had come back and, and they came to Ziglag. And the Bible says that he and his 600 men came back because the Philistines would not let them go and fight because they were fighting against Saul and they felt that David would turn against him. And they came back to Ziglag and the Amalekites had burned down Ziglag, taking their wives, their cattle, their children. Do y'all remember that scripture? The Bible says that they wept so hard because everything was gone and the 600 men turned to David and said, we're going to kill you because this is your fault. Instead of David says, let's join hands and sing Kumbaya, David said, the Bible said that David went and got the ephod from the priest. And David went off by himself and encouraged himself in his God. Sometimes we got to know how to do without everybody else as Hezekiah did. Turn your face to the wall and call on the name of Jesus all by your that's why That's why James said in James 4 and 8 he tells us to draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. And the psalm that I love so much, Psalm 91, 1 through 4, it tells us that he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler. And I can feel that when I'm by myself with the Lord. Amen. Now remember I said that Jesus never said that there was anything wrong with public prayer. Amen. If everybody is on one accord as shown in the Old Testament with Jehoshaphat and Judah and we remember that when Jehoshaphat heard that the children of Ammon and the children of Moab and the children of Mount Seir were coming up against him. He called for a fast and he began to pray of all Judah. And when they prayed together, when all of their minds and their hearts were on one accord and that's seeking the Lord for help, the Bible says that the word of the Lord fell on Jehaziel. And God began to speak to him and said, be not dismayed by this great multitude. Don't even worry about them because the battle is not yours, but it's the Lord's. A amen. So there's nothing wrong with public prayer. Even in the New Testament, there's an example that the Bible talks about in Acts, the second chapter, when Jesus had told them to go back into Jerusalem and tarry in the upper room. There were 120 of them up in the upper room and they were praying for the Bible says that they were in one place on one accord. So 10 days after Jesus had left, they had been in prayer. They were having prayer meeting. It was a prayer band. They were there praying for the Lord, praying for that that God had promised them. And the Bible says that when the day of Pentecost was fully come, <laughs> when the day of Pentecost was fully come, all of a sudden, the sound of a rushing mighty wind filled that house and visions of cloven tongues of fire sat on each one of them and they began to speak in other tongues. So there's nothing wrong with public prayer. But their benefits to be had for coming 
to the private place and communing with the Lord. That there are benefits when I can just have Jesus all by myself. There's benefits when I ain't got to worry about anybody else whispering in my ear, but all I hear is the word of God coming. Y'all yeah, wish I had some help up in here. I don't need anybody else touching and agreeing. I don't need anybody laying their hands on me. All I need is Jesus, and that's enough. And this is what I get. This is what I get. This is why there are benefits in private prayer. There's benefits. Hebrews 11 and 6 says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. Because if I come to him, I got to believe that he is. He's real. He's able. He can do whatever I ask him. And he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. I know that if I'm praying in private, I'm the one running after God. I ain't got to worry about if you keeping up. I ain't got to worry about if you praying along with me. If it's just me and God, that's all I got to worry about. And as Prophet Stephen said, when you come to God, you better believe that God is able. Because we have to run after God. We have to chase God. We have to say, Lord, have mercy. We have not because we... And when I'm with the Lord, I can ask him anything that I want to ask him. Are, are y'all are with me? Watch, watch this. God is the Lord of heaven and earth. And when we acknowledge the Lord's status by turning to him instead of turning to anything or anyone else, God is pleased with us and he rewards us. If something is going wrong with me, I don't have to tell the prayer warriors. But I can talk to Jesus. Prayer warriors can't do anything for me but ask Jesus himself. So if they can ask him, why can't I ask him all by myself? Are y'all with me? A amen. And, and, and as, I, as, I, as I close there, there are two hymns that remind me of the importance of private prayer. I've already told you there's nothing wrong with public prayer if everybody's there for the right reason on one accord with the same spirit. Because Jesus said, we're two or three. Gather in my name, which means that they're on one accord. Jesus said, there am I in the midst also. But you gotta be on the same, amen. Amen. These two hymns tell me the importance of private prayer. The first one says, what a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. Watch this. Watch this. What a friend I have in Jesus. I don't care how close my best friend is. I still can't tell them everything that's going on with me. But I can go to that man named Jesus. Shut my door. Tell him everything that's going on and ain't got to worry about anybody else knowing about it. Can I get a witness in here? See, because you say, what a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. I'm not worthy to stand in the presence of the Lord, but because of his grace and because of his mercy, he gives me a privilege to come before him as wretched as I am, but I can come just as I am and bear my all to Jesus and in no wise will he cast me out. Amen. It says, oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pains we bear. Why am I going through some stuff that I shouldn't be going through? Why am I letting my brain be racked with all kind of mess? It's all because we do not carry everything. Everything to God in prayer. And I love that every time I hear that hymn, it reminds me of how, the, how beneficial private prayer is. And the second, the second hymn, 
the second hymn. It's, it's, it's the second stanza of this hymn that we rarely sing. We sing the first one, but we don't sing this one. Listen at this. I may have doubts and fears. My eyes be filled with tears. But wait a minute. I may have doubts and fears. Wait a minute, pastor. You mean you might have doubts and fears? And my eyes may be filled with tears, but watch this. You'll never know about it. Because I can go to Jesus and just be myself and tell him everything that's going on. Can I get a witness in here? And why can I do this? Listen at the next, listen at the next line. But Jesus is a friend who watches day and night. Which means whatever doubts and fears I have, whatever tears I may be crying, Jesus sees them all. So what do I do? I go to him in prayer. He knows my every care. And watch this. Here's the line that everybody going to know. And just a little talk with Jesus. Just a little talk with Jesus. Just a little talk with Jesus. Makes it right. Public prayer versus private prayer. If I get my private prayer right, if I get my private prayer right, if I get my prayer life in order with the Lord, when I come in public to pray, I know that we'll be able to get a prayer through. And it doesn't just fall on the pastor. It doesn't just fall on the deacons. It doesn't just fall on the ministers or the missionaries. It falls on the ushers. It falls on the choir. It falls on the sextons. It falls on everybody who is a child of God. And what has happened to church now? We don't come together on one accord as they did in the days of Jesus. And when we get back to that, when we get back to that, and when our public prayer comes together, when we come together as a church, and we pray, we'll see God moving. We'll see God moving in our homes. We'll see God moving in our community. We'll see God moving in our state. We'll see God moving in this nation. We'll see God moving in this world. But the church got to come together first. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. Amen. Amen.